This is core one, health priorities in Australia, and we're up to key idea two, what are the priority issues for improving Australia's health? We're having a look at the dot point, a growing and aging population, and they're the four dash points under these dot point, but we'll come to those later. I'm just gonna start off by looking at the actual dot point itself of a growing and aging population. Now, so what is the big deal of this growing and aging population? Because it's attracted quite a lot of media attention of late, and I'm gonna have a look at why it's such a big deal. Um, in 2016, 6% of the Australian population were aged over the um, age of 75 years of age on average. By 2016, this figure is tipped to jump to 14% of the population will be over the age of 75. Now, this 8% increase in elderly people is bad for the health system. Why is this the case? Well, a number of reasons. Uh, the first reason is elderly people get sick. As people get older, their chances of getting cardiovascular disease, cancer and diabetes, just to name three diseases, increase significantly. And if we focus on one of these, cardiovascular disease, the cost of treating cardiovascular disease is significant. Um, in 2005 figures, the cost of treating cardiovascular disease was over $6 billion to the Australian healthcare system. Now, the, the Australian population doubles um, by year 2060. That means the cost of treating cardiovascular disease is going to double also. And the Australian health, uh, Australian health system simply can't uh, cope with that. The second main problem with an elderly population is that you have less percentage of the people in workforce, therefore paying tax, and a greater percentage of people on social welfare because they're now earning the pension. Now these two issues combined um, add up to a significant strain on the Australian economy and also the healthcare system. So what can the Australian government do about this? Well, the first thing they can do is the first dash point called healthy ageing. Now healthy ageing is extending the number of healthy years and just not the number of years people live for. So in a nutshell what that means is you want people as they get older to, to get old, older in a healthy manner. That means they are not getting as sick and not requiring medical treatment which is expensive. Now the benefits of remaining say physically active throughout your life include less demand on the Australian healthcare system and less of a strain on family, carers and volunteers. Now, getting health promotion right today is going to be also crucial in reducing the effects of an ageing population by 2060. That means that effective health promotion policies are put in place today. For example, getting more people in the community physically active, that's going to help this problem of healthy ageing. The next dash point is is the increased population living with chronic disease and disability. Now chronic disease, diseases and illnesses are those things that people live for for a number of years and if not a lifetime. These include such illnesses as uh, back complaints, arthritis and, and having sight problems. Now problems such as back complaints and also arthritis can be alleviated to a large extent if people look after themselves during their lifetime. So again, there has to be a big emphasis placed on uh, health promotion and also getting people to age in a healthy manner. The third dash point is demand for health service and workforce shortages. Now the Australian healthcare system is already at breaking point. Um, there are many hospitals that are overcrowded and also have an extreme shortage of nurses and other healthcare professionals. Now this graph here shows the average waiting time for elective surgery in this country and across all states the average time is over 30 days for elective surgery. Now again into the future if the Australian population uh, doubles in terms of being elderly it's just going to place more people in hospitals. There'll be more need for uh, more hospitals to be built and also more healthcare professionals. Um, and in particular, what will be of cause of a note is there's already today a shortage of geriatric nursing. That's uh, nurses looking after the elderly, and this will just become a bigger problem into the future. Now, the last dash point is the availability of carers and volunteers. Now, basically, in summary, a carer is a person who provides informal assistance to a 
person because of that person's age or illness. Now, if the population has this problem of becoming older into the future, that we're going to require more and more volunteers and carers in this country. And at the moment, there seems to be a bit of a decline at, uh, at this current day in people who are willing to provide volunteer their, to volunteer their services. Now, volunteers for organisations such as Meals on Wheels, St Vincent's and the Salvation Army are, as I said before, they're already short on volunteers who are prepared to assist the elderly. So what will the problem be like in the year 2000? So why are governments reluctant to address this issue today? Well, there's a very good reason for it. And this is the um, what happens at the voting uh, on voting day or at the ballot box. The benefits won't be seen until the, cur the current government is well and truly gone. So, for example, today, if the Liberal government, the coalition government, wanted to attack this problem, they would have to uh, introduce some policies that wouldn't be very popular amongst the Australian voters. And there'd be a high likelihood that if they did introduce some measures to combat this problem, that the Liberal government would be out at the next election. So, therefore, any government is reluctant to do something that they won't see the immediate benefits of. So they're more likely to want to build such things as more roads or um, improve education in this country where people will see the immediate benefit of rather than trying to address this problem of Australia's ageing population.